Hi folks, Marty here, and I'm glad you could join me for this week's painting tutorial. And what I'm going to do today is a wee pen and wash sketch. And I'm going to use a pencil to start with just to, to quickly lay in uh, what I'm going to be drawing. And then I'm going to give it a, a foundational coat. And then we'll decide if we're going to go over the top up with pen before we do the final wash or leave the pen until later. So I'll just work that out as we go. This is a wee scooter. So I want to quickly just establish uh, my baseline. And then quickly get in the scooter wheels and so on. Remember these uh, little scooters from when I was a, a teenager uh, growing up and uh, all the mods driving around on them. I'm just quickly establishing the shape of this. It's not perfect, but okay, so that's that kind of roughly jotted in there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to have this. Um, front of an old cottage or barn or whatever it is. This is going around the corner. This is a picture that uh, I've seen some time ago. And I remember um, just playing around with it and thinking I'd make a, make a good painting one day. So here we go. Um, I mean, maybe put a block behind here. And then in the picture, as far as I can remember, it had, um, had this wee, almost like an outbuilding here with a straw or bamboo kind of roof. really is just I'm trying to remember this um, so you kind of just fill in the blanks as you go just kind of use your imagination just to
had a few crates and old bits of boxes and I think it was vegetables and stuff like that. It was had to be in the boxes. Maybe I'll do a barrel around here. And then some some spices and stuff and herbs and whatnot. And then there was this, it's almost like a canopy kind of a thing. And there was a, a window here. And then I remember there being pots and stuff in it. And then there was sort of grass and not grass, um, ivy and so on. Just growing up the, the walls. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember the colour of the little scooter. I think I need something over here just to kind of... Yep, I think it was actually a door. These things are great to do if you're just out and about and you see something you like the looks of. It's going to make a great painting. And I think there's a, a hanging basket or something here. We'll do, we'll do, um, some, some paving. I think I remember there being 
something on that chair, like a, like a flower pot or It was one of those pictures, as far as I remember, I think it was all very staged. Okay, I think we'll work with that. And there might have been a window, a window or something up here. This is going to be pushed back, so we're going to have to use cool colours for that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll we'll mix up some colours and we'll get cracking on this. Best thing to do here is rather than talking about specific uh, paint colours, I'll I'll probably refer to this as hot and cold colours. Um, so I'm going to drop in a warm colour just to get us going here, and I'm going to wet the page here. Don't worry if you don't if it doesn't go right up to the to the edge there. Now we'll throw in a bit of color. So a nice kind of stone color, just in case they're looking what's in your palette, looking at what's in your palette, and uh, deciding which color you want to do there. And then I'm going to put in a wee bit more of a pinky colour into that, so... Um, and because I'm doing this by a light colour, I am going to have to quickly cut it in. Just cut around that bag like that, and then just mop up any any wee bits of paint that start to pull on you. And then I think we'll kind of darken that up a wee bit, make it a wee bit cooler by adding a bit of blue in there as we go behind the scooter. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go around and just touch those little drops here that are just starting to pull on me. Just so I don't get any any back runs or cauliflower. And then back into that pinky colour again. And uh, just bring it around the corner here. Just make sure there's not, not too much purling going on. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring that on down. Onto the, the paved area here. Maybe go a little bit cooler and darker just underneath where the, the wheels of that bike are going to be. It's just remembering that um, when you're going into wet into wet, you don't want the, the paint to be too 
too watered down or it's going to not help you very much. You want it to be thicker. I think something like that will do. And I'll maybe just soften that up as it runs towards the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do now is um, turn our attention to that door there. And I think we'll do that like a, a, a greeny kind of colour. And again, it's just keeping this whole thing nice and loose. Okay, you don't want to go in, you don't want to be going in there and um, mucking around too much with that. You want to keep the whole thing just clean. I mean, it's just a wee watercolour sketch. And what I'm going to do now is just get some some of my red there. And I'm going to just drop a bit in here where that canopy is. Lock the whole thing in there. Okay, I think that's an okay kind of an undercoat there. And what we'll do is, um, we'll drop a wee bit of brown down here. And I'll do for those boxes or crits or whatever they are. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to quickly try this off just to stop, stop it from running on me. Okay, so that's that um, basically blocked in there. Um, so what I want to do now is uh, maybe turn my attention to some of the stuff at the back here. So what I want is a nice soft bluey colour. I'll just drop it in like that. And then maybe bring it underneath here. It basically pushes anything um, in the background back further. I'll set the recede. Try it off quickly. Okay, so that's come together right later. Um, so 
what we're going to do is we're going to mix up the colour for that back there. So I'll try that, see how we get on. So basically just block it all in there. It's a good idea when you're doing these um, to set yourself uh, a time on it. Because I find that the longer you work at it, you start to get a bit fatigued and then you start to get a bit tired of the thing, you know. So you want to keep it fast and loose and fun. When I say fun, I mean, you know, you got to be enjoying it. You don't want to become a chore. And we'll dry that off quickly. What we'll do is we'll go into that again with that a greeny color, but we'll add a wee bit more. We'll add a wee bit more blue to it. And that'll do for the um shadow areas around this panel here. We'll just drop that in there like that. This bit on the inside will give it a wee bit of stronger color. It's basically the same color, but just um, darken down a little bit. I don't want it to be too fussy about this either. What we'll do, we'll just use our um, dump brush just to, just to lift a wee bit of that back out again there. Just to make it look like it's um, rounded. I'm just going to use a wee bit of tissue just to soften that. I'll dry that off. And the reason why I keep drying it off is I don't want to accidentally wipe it all over the place. Put a bit of shadow underneath that handlebar. Drop a little bit down here. Maybe a little bit of shadow under the seat. And I'm going to just drop on a wee bit of detail here.
It's basically that green mixture there, but uh, some stronger color in it. Then what we'll do is we'll make that we'll make that seat a brown leathery color. Some of them, I've seen some of these that they're they've been black, but I don't want um, the seat to dominate the rest of the colors here. So what I'm going to do now is mix up a, not exactly a black color, but something strong. So all your, you use all your darks, your ultramarines, your dark browns and so on. Mix them together and I'll give you a, a nice strong color. But you definitely don't want to use black as such because it'll just be too domineering. And you don't want to go and work in and work in this thing, you know. Okay, I think that will do. I'm just going to go into that brown again while I'm here. Put a wee bit of shadow color there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to start to build up around the picture here. Um, so this is the um, the kitchen, I would imagine. I think a bit of a kind of purpley color will do that. It's often dark, but you don't want it too dark. Maybe a wee bit of a lizard and crimson in there just to create a wee bit of variety in that. This could be little flowers or herbs or or herbs, depending on how you pronounce it. Um Okay, so you're just constantly looking around the, the picture uh, and uh, trying to keep a balance in the thing, you know. So I think what we'll do next is maybe we'll um, we'll work in this area here, just this corner. Um, this will be block uh, breeze blocks or block on the corner, uh, maybe with um, the rendering off. Whatever you're trying to make stand out, um, whatever the, the center of the attention is for the picture as in this case it is the 
the scooter, so you want to paint around that. Just bring that straight down to the ground level. Okay, and then this, let me do this a slightly different colour, just to create a wee bit of variety. Yeah, something like that, and maybe slightly warmer. These will be little crates and so on. Go ahead and block those in, and then we can come back later and so what I think we'll do now is we'll go back to that and it's trying to get the right balance of strength and um color here. Um so I'm not going to block it right in. Um, I'm going to leave little spaces at the seams and stuff there. You see a lot of these canopies in Europe, um, or awnings or whatever, and um, they're either well, they're either red or, or a green color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that bring that down here um, as if the Red awning is reflecting against that back wall. And now what I think I'll do is that that um that back window and the distance sir. I think I'll mix up a, a blue kind of grey tone for that. Don't want this to be too standardish. It's like the old saying, you're better indicating rather than stating. I 
And what I'll do is I'll put a wee bit of shadow as if there's a window cell here. Okay, so there's bits of ivy and stuff that's going to go on here. So I think we'll just um, we'll start working on that now. So we want to mix up a nice, a nice light green color. So I'm just going to do my cads, my cad yellow, and then a bit of blue into that. This will be for the the bit if there was sun hitting it. Gonna look a bit brighter. What we'll do is we'll bring a bit of that around here. That's just your ivy growing up the wall there. Okay, I think I'll do it. And what we'll do is we'll stick a wee bit more blue into that. Just to darken it a bit. And this will be for the, the shadow color underneath. Just wee dabs here, a little dab will do here and there. And then we'll put some round about here, just underneath where there would be uh, bits of shadow. And just we. Just wee tickles here and there. You're kind of working fast on this. You don't want to be uh, laboring it. Something like that, and then maybe a couple of wee bits coming down here, like that. Okay, that's. Alright, I think what we'll do is get a wee tissue now and we'll just give it a wee, a wee top here and there. Just to soften it up a little and then we'll dry that off. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to, I'm just going to do a wee bit of decoration here. Um, 
See, that's like a little hanging basket there. What I'll do is with that same strong brownie colour, I'll, um, I'll just do a wee bit of detailing on these boxes here, crates or whatever they are. It can be anything you want them to be. Okay, looks all right. Um, maybe going a wee bit darker with that there brown colour and create a wee bit of shadow in here. But a shadow here and there. You're basically just trying to build a picture up piece by piece. And then I'm just taking a wee bit of that colour, lifting it out with a damp brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that brown colour again there and maybe add a wee bit of yellow ochre or something to it just to tone it down a wee bit and, and I'm going to I'm going to paint on some some of these wooden bits here you don't want to block it in you just want to keep it kind of broken and impressionistic Okay, see how it helps just to pull it together there a wee bit there. And I might um, stick some on over here as well. And then go into some of that dark stuff. The dark brown stuff we were using a minute ago. And then it's a bit like a roof support here. Drop that strong stuff underneath here. They're just to indicate a bit of shadow over there. Okay, so it's starting to build up rightly. And um, what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to paint these little pots here. And I think what we'll do is we'll mix up a terracotta kind of color, um, light red, and a bit of yellow ochre or something like that. Don't be going too strong with us, just keep it keep it uh, a nice light colour. And then what you can always do is come along later and um, darken it with some shadow colour. And then I'll do these two up in the window here. So you're just trying to fill in little bits here and there. And what I'm going to do is that little uh, tail light on the back of the scooter. I'm just going to darken that a little bit. And then with that terracotta colour and maybe a wee touch of blue in it just to darken it down a bit. I'm just going to Put in a wee bit of shadow here and there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn my attention to this area here. And um, just going to imagine that that's all kinds of fruit and so on. Some nice strong colours. Okay, 
could be grapefruits or apples or... So I'm not being too precious about this. I'm going to pick up a bit of um, ultramarine and add a little bit of alizarin crimson into it. Make it look like a sort of like a, a purpley colour. Maybe pop a bit of green in here and there. That could be anything. A stronger color there. So basically, all you're doing is painting a bit of nonsense, really. You know, nonsense. You know, it, uh, and what the I'll do is work that out. A bit of a brownie color. That's going to be like a crate or something. Put a bit of stronger stuff around the bottom of it. And then what I'm going to do is, there's other wee bits and bobs in the in the distance here, and I'm going to just give them a very um, grayed out color, just to make it look like there's barrels or something there. And then what I'm going to do now is put some green in here, this hanging basket. Something like that. Let me just touch up the top. That oh, too much, too much. I was gonna say, just touch the top of it gently with a tissue. Um, I use kitchen paper or kitchen towel and tissue paper. I think tissue paper is a lot softer and, and it gives you a, a nicer, a nicer softer um, touch on it. You know, kitchen paper just mops it up completely. So what I might do is um, uh, just some um, roots and stuff that are coming up here. I'm going to switch to my wee rigger and I'm going to go into that uh, brownie colour again. And then just kind of hit and miss. Don't want to overdo this again. It's you know just a wee bit here. Like the old saying, how many people does it take to paint a picture? Two, someone to paint it, and the other one to take a brush off them. And they're going too far. OK, 
Okay, and what I'm going to do is uh, just add something a bit darker, so I'm just going to gently touch that. Okay, I think we'll stick with that. And we'll mix up a, a little drop of green again there, using the cad yellow and cobalt blue or something like that. And then we'll just put some in this wee. basket here that's sitting on top of the bike. And I'm going to go in there with that stronger colour, that stronger green, which has a bit more blue in it. Remember like what we did when we are doing the ivy? And then just touch it around here. Now we'll do the same with these over here. We'll just use a nice light green. Just so they'll stand out a wee bit. Okay, so what I think we'll do here is we'll put a wee bit of um a wee bit of shadow work on this door. Um just a wee bit now, you don't want too much. Uh, let's try this colour here. Yeah, it's just something very, very Loose. It's just an impression you want. You don't want to overdo that at all. Um, and what we'll do is we'll put a wee bit of shadow maybe under the door there. Okay, I think this is coming on nicely. Um, I'm just looking at this, the brickwork here, and I just want to be careful. I don't want to be doing anything that's going to push us too far. So I'm going to mix up a very light brown colour, and we'll just give it a wee, a wee try here to see what it looks like. Yeah, just something like that, nothing too drastic. Better just to lay it on, lay on something nice and loose. So if it's a disaster, or it's not working, it's not going to be the end of the world there. So I think something like that will do. Okay, so I think the next thing here um, is maybe I think about um, a little bit of shadow work. Uh, maybe drop a bit of a shadow down here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean my palette a little bit here. I'm going to mix up a nice, a nice um, translucent shadow colour. And that's my go-to colours for this are cobalt blue and a little hint of alizarin crimson. So here we go. I'm just going to, I'm just going to imagine that there's some shadow coming down here down to say that cannot be. Just drop it in there. Don't be don't be mucking around with it too much. You don't want to rub up the, what's underneath there. And I'm just mopping up anything that's pulling down there. I'm gonna use that same colour but I'm gonna put a little bit more um a lizard into it and this is gonna be the little bit under the canopy where it's kind of in shadow so I'm just looking at night and thinking is there anything else I need to do further with this what I might do is just where the the metal is Okay, I think we're ready for um, panning in some stuff here.
So this is a wee uh, fountain pen I'm using here and it's just wee touches. You don't want to overdo it with this. Um, I like pen and wash and I like it to be a little bit um, understated if you know what I mean. I don't think you want it to be too um, painting by numbers looking. There's just wee bits here and there. You don't want it to be too over the top with this. Maybe we put on the door here. When you're doing lines with us here, you want it to be kind of hit and miss, kind of lost and found. And again, you don't really want to use a ruler or anything for this kind of thing just doesn't look great. Okay, I think we'll just turn our attention to the, the scooter now. Detailing here, and uh, maybe that back part door. We wingmers. And then maybe a wee bit of detailing down here. dots round about here just to make it look like 
there's detail going on there. Okay, there's not a lot more to do to that really, maybe just just a wee tickle on those bricks there, you know. is uh, maybe a wee bit on this. Again, just a wee bit of loss and find here. So I'm just looking at this at the minute. I'm thinking, is there anything um, shadow-wise that needs my attention? Um, I'm thinking maybe just, if I could drop a wee bit of purple. And here and there. just make that look like it's more three-dimensional so just wee bits here and there don't overdo it okay and then maybe maybe we put a shadow underneath this door here or sorry the windows I'll just lift it up a bit I think we'll just chuck a wee bit underneath the the wheels of this bike here. Don't want it to look like it's floating in the air. And then I'm just, what you want to do is just spend a minute or two just kind of having a wee scan over it to see if there's anything you've missed. If there's anything that can actually help us. And I'm kind of looking here and thinking maybe a wee bit of shadow. I'm just putting in wee bits of shadow around this bike just to make it look like it's more three-dimensional. And I'm going to put a wee bit down these doors here. Again, it's all lost and found. Hit and miss. Another way of putting it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just use an eraser and then um, we're going to just gently just massage that paper. We don't want to rub too hard on this and what that does is it takes out any of your uh, pencil guidelines and it just generally helps to just clean it up a little bit. So you don't want to be rubbing like mad, just, you're just massaging the paper. 
just little circles. You don't want to be lifting the paint off, so keep it keep it easy. So one more wee quick scan and um, maybe we could maybe do the back of those uh, wing mirrors there. There you go. And I think the only thing that's kind of kind of left there maybe. Um, in fact, there's a some lines up there. Do you remember I said we'll come back to those later and we'll rub those out. This helps to push that back a wee bit. Helps to recede it a little. Okay, and there's a wee bit of an unsightly line there. It's just me being a bit fussy on it, but you really you don't really need to throw all that hassle. Okay. I think the only thing that is left to do now is just pop my old signature on there. And there you go. And then the best part of it all is just to take the tape off and see what you have. And the reason why I use tape um, is just the bits that you do come down um, to the edge of the paper, at least it frames it for you. It gives you an idea of what it looked like if it was actually mounted properly and in a frame. So there you go folks, there's our little pen and wash. Um, just very simple. Um, have a wee go at that there and let me know how you get on with it. So for now, Marty out.